In this video, we're going to be discussing open thermodynamic systems, and we're going to see how we can apply the steady flow energy equation in order to determine unknown parameters. In this particular scenario, we have water flowing into some kind of pump. The pump is applying power to the fluid, but we also have changes in various other parameters. So with any question of this type, the first thing that we need to do is start with our steady flow energy equation, which states that phi plus P equals the change in potential energy per second plus the change in kinetic energy per second plus the change in enthalpy per second. Now in this particular question, we're going to determine the change in potential energy per second and the change in kinetic energy per second so that we can finally determine the change in enthalpy of the water per second. In the bottom left hand corner, we have some data. We know that the pump unit is supplying 250 kilowatts of power, but we also know that energy is being lost as heat, thigh out, and we know that it's being lost because we actually have a negative value for thigh. Therefore, referring to our diagram, we know that heat energy is being lost. We have the mass flow rate of our water as 8.5 kilograms per second, and we have our inlet and outlet velocities as 12 and 9 meters per second respectively. We're also told that the inlet of the pump is at an elevation 20 meters above the outlet. So in this scenario, we're unable to cancel any of the terms in our steady flow energy equation. We're given a value for heat out, we're given a value for P in. We're given a value for the change in elevation at the inlet and the outlet, and we're also given the velocities at inlet and outlet. The remaining variable that we need to calculate is the change in enthalpy per second. Once we have our change in enthalpy per second, we're actually going to be able to determine the temperature of the water leaving the pump. Now, in order to do this, we need another couple of bits of data. First of all, we need the inlet temperature of the water, which we're going to specify as 65 degrees C. And we also need the specific heat capacity at constant pressure for water, which is 4200 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, so first of all, let's calculate our change in potential energy per second. Now the change in potential energy per second is the mass flow rate times gravity times the change in elevation between position two and position one, Z2 minus Z1. Now we need to be really careful here because we also need to determine whether this term is positive or negative. So here we have a mass flow rate of 8.5. We have gravity as 9.81. And if we're using a Z2 as our datum line here, then the elevation of Z2 is going to be zero. Z1 is 20 meters above Z2. So we actually have zero minus 20. Now when we run that through the calculators, what we find is we have a change in potential energy per second equal to minus 1668. Now that answer there is going to be in SI units of watts, but I'm going to convert that to kilowatts as most of our other variables are in kilowatts. So we have minus 1.668 kilowatts. The important thing here is the fluid's actually losing potential energy as it flows through the pump. Next let's see what's happening with our kinetic energy. We have the change in kinetic energy per second and the formula for that is a half times the mass flow rate times the change in the square of the velocity. Now once again it's v2 squared minus v1 squared and we need to be very careful when we input these values because we need to know whether our change in kinetic energy is positive or negative. We have a half times 8.5. V2 is 9, so we've got 9 squared. V1 is 12. Giving us a change in kinetic energy per second equal to minus 268. Once again, that's in watts. So I'm going to convert that to kilowatts minus 
0.268 kilowatts. So the next stage in our working then is to determine our change in enthalpy because we know our heat, we know our power, we know our change in potential energy per second, and we know our change in kinetic energy per second. So we're going to take our steady flow energy equation and we're going to rearrange it to make delta H over S the subject. Let's make a note of our values of change in potential energy per second and change in kinetic energy per second, and then clear some space for the next calculation. Okay, so inputting some values into our steady flow energy equation, we have phi as minus 3.5, note that we're working in kilowatts here, and we have P as 250. We have our change in potential energy as minus 1.668. We have our change in kinetic energy as minus 0.268. And we're trying to determine our change in enthalpy per second. So we can simplify our left hand side. We have minus 3.5 plus 250, which equals 246.5. But in order to get delta H over S on its own, we need to add 1.668 to each side, and we need to add 0.268 to each side in order to undo those negative signs. So we have 246.5 plus 1.668 plus 0.268 equals delta H over S. Therefore, running that through the calculator, delta H over S equals 248.436 kilowatts, because we've been working in kilowatts throughout. But if we want to determine the temperature of the fluid exiting our system, then we must remember to work in SI units. We have the following formula. We have change in enthalpy equals mass flow rate times specific heat capacity at constant pressure times T2 minus T1. And we're going to rearrange that to make T1 the subject. In order to do that, we need to divide each side by MCP, and then we need to add T1 to each side. We covered this process in the earlier tutorial on the non-flow energy equation. So here we have T2 equals delta H over MCP plus T1, and inputting values, we have 248,436 watts. We need to express this value in watts rather than kilowatts. So we have 248436 divided by our mass flow rate of 8.5 times our specific heat capacity at constant pressure, 4200. And to that we're adding 65 degrees, giving us a final temperature T2 equal to 71.96 degrees. So the act of pumping the water has actually increased its temperature by over 5 degrees. Let's take a look at one more example. In this scenario, we have air travelling through a compressor. The air enters the compressor at 35 degrees Celsius and leaves at 97 degrees Celsius. Therefore, we know that the air is being compressed because its temperature is increasing. We have the specific heat capacity at constant pressure for air of 1,005 joules per kilogram Kelvin. And in this scenario, we have a mass flow rate of air of 0.8 kilograms per second. Now, we've also specified that phi out, the heat being lost, is 4.5 kilowatts. The important thing to remember is that if it's phi out, if heat energy is leaving the system, then that value is going to be negative heat energy is leaving our system. Now what we want to determine is how much power is being put into the system. So we're applying power here at the compressor, which is causing a rise in temperature of the air. Now if we refer to our steady flow energy equation, we notice a couple of things. 
First of all, no information is given about the elevation of the pipe. Therefore, we have to disregard the change in potential energy. The other reason we would disregard the change in potential energy is because we have a relatively low mass flow rate. The change in potential energy is going to be negligible when compared to the change in enthalpy. The other thing we're not given is any information about the change in velocity of the air. So once again, we're going to assume that the change in kinetic energy is negligible when compared to the change in enthalpy. So in this scenario, the first thing we're going to do is calculate our change in enthalpy per second. So this time we have change in enthalpy per second equals mass flow rate, specific heat capacity at constant pressure, T2 minus T1. Inputting some values, we have 0 0.8 times 1005, 97 minus 35 giving us a change in enthalpy per second equal to 49848. That answers in watts, or we can express that in kilowatts, 49.848 kilowatts. So in this question, we're being asked to calculate our power in P. So returning to our steady flow energy equation, we have phi. Recall that phi is negative, and it's negative 4.5 if we're working in kilowatts. P is positive, plus P, it's P in. And that equals 49.848 kilowatts. So finally, to get P on its own, we need to add 4.5 to each side. So adding 4.5 to our right-hand side gives us 54.348 kilowatts of power being inputted into the system. An important thing to note here is that the power that we need to input into the system in order to raise the enthalpy by 49.8 kilowatts is actually 54.3 kilowatts. The reason for that is because we're also providing enough power in order to overcome the heat losses. So if you like, we're needing to apply more power in order to compensate for our losses in heat energy.